the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, 12-1 and one last year. Returning starters, they got eight on offense, six on defense. Experience nationally, only number 98. Not great. Brian Kelly, 81 and 35 in nine years so far, which is crazy to think about. This is going to be his 10th year, right? Uh, has double digit wins in three of the last four years and in back to back seasons for the first time since Lou Holtz was there two decades ago. Uh, returning the offensive coordinator, Chip Long, and defensive coordinator, Clark Lee. That is a major league thing, right? Because uh, there was talk of Chip Long going to Alabama. Clark Lee, not a lot of talk elsewhere, but you've seen guys like that have a really good season in and bounce, yeah, right? Get, get hired away somewhere else. Uh, yeah. I was wrong last year about Clark Lee. I'll just go on and tell you. I, look, I had him going 8-4 and four last year yep. because it had been two decades since they'd had back-to-back double-digit win seasons. So, of course, when they won 10 games the year before, that I thought there was no way, right? Uh, but I was wrong. Number 30 in total defense. Uh, look, losing Mike Elko I thought was going to be a disaster because I think that guy's a genius. But Clark Lee learned under him and everything, and he, uh, he implemented everything that he learned uh, very successfully. Number 13 scoring defense in the country. They got help because uh, Tillery and linebackers uh, Tranquil and Corey stayed for their senior seasons. This year, however, they're losing all three of those along with cornerback Julian Love to the NFL. Uh, you and I have talked about Julian Love and how important he was to this team. Correct. Uh, you could see it clear as day right. in that Clemson game. It was, it was night and day from when he was in and when he was out with that injury. Uh, look, defensive ends, uh, Okwara, I think that's how you say that. And uh, let's see. Gilman, I believe that's right. That both of those guys return. Uh, that's that's big. That's big. You got some experience. You got some guys coming back that can lead that defense with the newer guys that are coming in. Quarterback Ian Book and four out of five offensive linemen are back. Uh, everybody but the center. Uh, former wide receiver Jafar Armstrong and Tony Jones Jr. are replacing running back Dexter Williams in the backfield. The schedule manageable, but they are facing seven teams coming off of bye weeks. Uh, but they do get a bye before the Michigan game, and Michigan has to play at Penn State the week before, so they got a break there. Yep. Uh, the game at Georgia is going to reveal a ton about whether or not this team is capable of getting back to a college football playoff or if it's just another you know 10-win, 9-win team, right? Uh, I will tell you, I've got them at 10-2. and two. Okay. I've got them losing at Georgia. I've got them losing at Michigan. I think Michigan gets payback on this one. I think Georgia's going to be really, really fired up for this. It's going to be at night uh, between the hedges. Uh, other than that, I mean, yeah, some of these teams get buys, but, like, look, they, they've got at Louisville, New Mexico at home, at Georgia, that's one of the losses, Virginia at home, Bowling Green at home, USC at home, and then a bye week. Then you play at Michigan, but then you got Virginia Tech at home, you got Duke uh, on the road, you got Navy at home, Boston College at home, and then you close out at Stanford. So I've got them nine and three, and I've got the two losses you've got. I think they're going to lose one of those Virginia Virginia Tech games at home. I think both of those teams are going to be good this year. Virginia Tech, I have no earthly idea how to explain what happened last season. I mean, it, I don't. You know, I don't think that's falling apart or having anything to. Do. No. And if Bronco Mendenhall continues to improve. Which is what he's done every year he's been there. Yeah. Then the next step is is going on the road and beating a big boy school. I could see this because if if Notre Dame puts everything they've got into the games at Georgia and at Michigan, Michigan the next week the next they week is play Virginia, Virginia. I know they get them at home, Virginia but Tech. that's right. And both of those are going to be well coached. They're going to be good schools. And uh, we put a lot into home field advantage, but sometimes that's sometimes it doesn't mean as much. I mean, you keep, right? I, I also like, just don't think teams, and I don't think that's a, I don't think it's a bad thing. No, no, I no, think like, Virginia Tech or Virginia could be really good. Yeah, no, they absolutely could. But but what I'm saying is, as far as home field advantage, like sometimes people just assume what well, they're at yet. home, etc. But the deal is, you can get really comfortable at home sometimes. That's right. Like for years, it happens under, all the time. For this decade-long Saban dynasty, yeah. the only games they lost were at home. That's right. You know, it, and it's because you feel safe. You feel like, God, oh, there's no way they're going to come in here with all of our crowd noise and everything else. But sometimes it ain't like that. So I've got them ten and two. You got them nine and three. I got them nine and three. I don't know where that other loss is coming, but I just think those other two schools are going to be well coached. They're really good. Notre Dame's coming off of. 
big games, whether they win yeah. those games or lose those games, those are going to be hard-fought games. I think that's where a team can sneak up and, and bite them, and, uh, and that's 9-3. and three. But I, I like Notre Dame a lot. Yeah, I think, oh, this, this is, I think this is a, a really good school. Yes, I, I think I think Brian Kelly is, I'm not going to say underrated or undervalued. I think he's underappreciated. Underappreciated, that's a good now, word. But it's hard. I've been one of the guys that's been on him. It's a, He's an ass. Oh, yeah. Okay? So, like, when a guy's a jerk, it's you, hard to... You can't to, be an ass and lose. It's it's hard to go out of your way to try to really talk him up or to sell him or to, or to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt more times than not. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. All right, 